Now we review that second Puss in Boots movie. I'm not going to take the time to remember its name. It was released in 2022, right at the end there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am Richard, and I have done the unthinkable and seen Puss in Boots too. I don't think I've reviewed a single movie out of this series. Uh, none of the Shrek films. Yeah, I think I may have seen one or two of them. Maybe the first one. Uh, that was before I reviewed movies. And I surely do not have any interest in watching these kiddie films. But it was there. I had the time. So here I am while I've watched the film. All right. Before I get any further into that... Let me, of course, remind you that for every thousand subscribers I get, I do purchase one of these bracelets from the company 4Ocean. 4Ocean pulls a pound of trash out of the ocean every time I do that. Now, you know, so if you would be so kind as come and like and subscribe, you'd be doing your part for a better world. Anyway, so the premise of Puss in Boots 2 is, of course, Puss in Boots is uh, essentially a musketeer. Uh, oddly, musketeers are not really considered to carry muskets. No, the three of them anyway. He's, you know, well... No, he's Cerno de Bergerac. Cerno de Bergerac was the most dangerous swordsman who ever lived. Okay? And being the most dangerous swordsman who ever lived, you know, he was untouchable. And instead of being an ugly dude with a giant nose, he is a much-beloved pussycat. Okay? Voiced by Antonio Banderas. So, you know, his, um... Incredible uh, charisma shines through. And, you know, in, in the beginning of this film, he gets into an incredible fight. The, the, anima the animation is just wonderful. It's actually exactly like uh, trying to chase down a feral cat in an enclosed space. I have had that experience, and I mean, cats are incredible at that. You would be surprised how they could just jump from one place to another and, you know, disappear into furniture and all those sorts of things. So it's like, yeah, this is, ex it captured that experience perfectly. Okay? And then in the end, because he's too cocky, uh, Puss in Boots loses his eighth life, wakes up in the doctor's office, and they're going like, look, you know, uh... You ain't gonna make it much longer if you keep doing this. And uh, Puss in Boots is like, eh. Eh, who cares? Then Death shows up. And for the rest of the movie, Puss in Boots is out there trying to, um, like, find a wishing star, I think it is, and run away from Death. And this, it's one of those life lesson movies. It kind of feels like um, Thor Love and Thunder, only, you know, instead of the bad guy going to get the wish, the good guy is going to get the wish, and people are following the good guy going to get the wish. So, yeah, look, okay. If you're familiar with fairy tales, there's a lot of fairy tales in there. Uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears shows up. There's another cat. I don't know if she's from a uh, another fairy tale. Uh, little Jack Horner is all grown up and has a pie business. So he's Big Jack Horner. And, you know, there's just a lot of references and things you, you would otherwise, you know, if you're not into fairy tales, you can be like, okay, what the heck's going on here? But there's a lot of these themes of knowing your place in life and accepting it okay and that's not a bad thing it's not a good thing it just it's a thing all right uh i would actually say i enjoyed this more than thor love and thunder because of its much funner visuals and its better jokes uh there's a crazy cat lady and watching this film reminds me that i should really clean the litter boxes more often. So yeah, look, you put this on your watch list, especially if you have children. It is a fine movie. It's reasonably enjoyable and a good way to kill two hours. Uh, if you're not into kiddie movies, you're not going to like this film. You will laugh. It's funny. Solid movie. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Love to hear yours down in the comments below. I'm Richard. <coughs> Ran
Randall the Rat here once again, and I'm here to remind you humans to comment, like, and subscribe. And you know why? Well, have you watched the news? Mother Nature is pissed! And we can help, because each one of these necklaces I'm wearing, it's a medal from the Conqueror. And in addition to being awesome bling, each one of them represents five trees. Five glorious trees that the owner of this channel has had planted. I'm wearing five of these, so I've got 25 trees around my neck. 25 of the more than 100 that have been planted so far. So if you want to do your part to unpiss off Mother Nature, listen to old Randall here and comment, like, and subscribe. Or, of course, I could just eat your face and make there be less humans to pollute the environment. Global warming sucks, and you're delicious.